Now call on Claire Adamson to be followed by Nigel Dawn. Six minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm very glad to be speaking in this debate this afternoon on the draft national planning framework and the draft Scottish planning policy. Um, I grew up in Lanarkshire and of course New Lanark is one of the most famous successes of placemaking um, in Sc not only in Scotland but possibly in the world. It was a vision of Robert Owen and included a factory, workers' housing, schools, a place of worship, shops were at, which were at the forefront of the cooperative movement and the very first workplace nursery in the world. Today, of course, it's acclaimed as a World Heritage Site and Lanarkshire is proud of its heritage and New Lanark's place in our industri industrial history. However, I think everyone in the Chamber would recognise it's highly unlikely that an enterprise such as this could get planning permission um, in, in Scotland today as it was on a, an undeveloped and unspoilt site at the time. But that, it's right that that is so because the National Planning Framework 3 should um, be giving us the balance of needs in our, our country. And I don't have a problem with the balanced growth statement that's in the document. I don't have a problem with balance at all, because if planning is about, is about anything, it's about balancing our economic, our environmental needs and the future of our country. I very much welcome the themes in, in the policy document, which is focused on sustainable economic growth, with, with more emphasis placed on economic benefits. The proposed planning system will support well-designed, successful, sustainable places where people want to live, want to visit and want to invest in. And a national pal planning policy and framework will support ambitions for a low-carbon economy, crucial for our country's future. And the planning system will support ambitions to respect, enhance and make responsible use of our natural and cultural assets. It should be a policy which will continue to be focused on sustainable economic growth, but with more emphasis placed on economic benefits. And this is key, and I don't have a problem with the wording in this. Um, I think it's absolutely clear that what this planning um, document, both planning documents in draft form give us is the opportunity to achieve the right balance for our country's future. There's also, uh, the, the government mentions a holistic approach to considering the relationship between buildings natural resources, movement and utilities. And these are all key to getting that balance right. It should focus on positive placemaking, of which New Lanark, I suppose, is one of the, the most famous and most successful examples. But it's based on six qualities about how we develop that. Distinctive, welcoming, adaptable, resource efficient, safe and pleasant, and easy to move around and beyond. That's why I very much look forward to the forthcoming policy on archi architecture in place, which will also show how we can um, encourage good design and create a kind of places we would all like to visit, live and work in. As a member for Central Scotland, I echo uh, Margaret Mitchell's comments about what this will mean for Central Scotland as a region and uh, welcome the Grangemouth and Peterhead Carbon Capture and Storage, the Central Scotland Green Network, the National Cycling Walking Network, which will cover all three local authorities in central Scotland. But perhaps, um, if you don't mind, as someone who was born and brought up in Motherwell, if I do also focus on something that's been mentioned quite a bit this afternoon, and that's the Ravenscraig site. It's not the white canvas that Robert Owen had in New Lanark, but it's perhaps the nearest thing we have to that in Scotland. It's the biggest brownfield site in Europe. And that gives us great opportunity to get that balance right in our community. A balance that will meet the needs both of the existing towns of Motherwell and Wisha, but also the economic opportunities and the, the development of Raven's Creek will give us. It's 30 years since Raven's Creek closed and the initial plans for the, t the, the site wanted a new town centre, major leisure facilities, housing, business industry, hotels, a railway station as mentioned by Mr Pentland and his, you, you, that, that whole new town, community facilities and road improvements. It's a hugely ambitious project, but something that is desperately needed in Lanarkshire. And when we look to what industry might come back to Lanarkshire, I do hope that um, within Ravens Cave we'll be able to build on the, the history in our area of um, technology and engineering and look to maybe building on some of the opportunities in the oil and gas sector and also new technologies when we look at what businesses might come to, to that area. Of course, it's not an empty site at the moment. We have Motherwell College, which has developed um, its um, 
a residential unit as a circle, which um, it alludes to the, the previous towers that existed in Ravenscraig. We also have the regional sports centre, which has already been used for the international children's game and is a possible training centre for the 2014 uh, Commonwealth Games. And, uh, and again, the tradition there of the, the um, design to look like the, the steel coming off the end of the, the steel um, manufacturing process um, is um, captured in the design in Ravenscraig, and it's really interesting. But um, Sarah Boyer mentioned innovation, and I think the most exciting thing at Ravenscraig at the moment is the building research establishment at the, the Innovation Park, which is going to build six sustainably um, and um, carbon um, efficient houses. And they're working very closely with the college to ensure that the um, the skills that are there to, to, to build and use sustainable development, sustainable growth in our housing development will be met by the, the people in the area. So I do welcome this and I think it's a great opportunity. I think if we get the balance right, it's wonderful for Scotland. And I, I would like to finish with a note of optimism from Robert Owen from 1816, where he says that um, he believes that um, <laughs> no obstacle whatsoever interviewed at the moment except ignorant to prevent such a state of society from becoming universal. And I believe that's the case. We can achieve this.